Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi is about to begin his third day here in Washington, D.C. Smoother bilateral relations is the goal, but there is still some friction. CCTV Sean Kalos is joining us here on the set with more on what's been discussed, and we have some news apparently coming yeah, out of these interesting. talks. Interesting. There is friction. There, there has been about one issue for some time, but yesterday we heard both uh, Secretary of State, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi talk about everything that the two nations did have in common. Well, we're apparently seeing some fruits of that. Multiple news organizations are reporting that a U.N. resolution has been approved to punish the DPRK for its recent activities, both a nuclear test and launching a rocket into space, saying it was carrying a satellite. Both China and the United States say that is a flagrant violation of the U.N. mandate. The rubbing point, the sticking point, had been how to punish the DPRK. The United States wanted tough economic sanctions, while China and Beijing favored getting Kim Jong-un and Pyongyang back to the negotiating table, trying to convince uh, the DPRK not to make any steps forward as a nuclear nation. Meanwhile, a day after meeting at length with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi was on Capitol Hill meeting with lawmakers today. It was day two of Wang's three-day visit to the United States, and while both countries talked at length Tuesday about the ties that bind the superpowers, the hot-button issue of the South China Sea remains a sticking point and will undoubtedly come up in talks with key U.S. congressional members. They are meeting with members of the House Foreign Relations Committee. Both Kerry and Wang agreed to disagree over the source of tension. The United States is accusing China of militarization of a group of islands in the South China Sea that China has historically claimed. A spokeswoman for China's foreign ministry was specifically asked about China deploying missiles and fighter jets on the Shisa Islands, one of the areas in question. It seems to me that a lot of foreign media are quite interested in these kind of questions. I want to stress that the Shisha Islands are part of China's territory with no dispute at all. Constructions and deployment on China's own territory is totally within China's sovereignty and perfectly justified. Now, picking up on that point, China points to the U.S. military activity in the South China Sea, including sailing U.S. warships within 12 nautical miles of an island in dispute, as well as flying military aircraft in the region. China says the ships were a deliberate violation of their waters. The U.S. Defense Department has said it will not back down, making it clear it will continue such actions to protect what the U.S. labels free navigation in the region where it estimated five trillion dollars worth of goods are shipped each year. Wang Yi says there has never been a problem with unfettered navigation in the South China Sea. The Secretary made mention of non-militarization. China, United States and ASEAN countries have all committed to non-militarization. We hope the parties will work together in the same direction. That is to say, Non-militarization is not the responsibility of one party alone. It's something that we share. Now, China's defense ministry was more blunt, saying the U.S. strengthening military deployment, flexing muscles, making provocations, launching joint military drills is the root cause of the militarization in the South China Sea. However, parties concerned are pointing fingers at China's legitimate construction. Well, it may seem like heated rhetoric, but above all, both Kerry and Wang say the two superpowers must continue dialogue over the issues. In Wang's words, the mutual understanding is important to prevent any miscalculation. A key word there. Three-day visit. Tomorrow's the last day. What can we expect? You know, it's been a very good visit. We know that this is the third time in the last 30 days that both Kerry and Wang have met face-to-face. -to -face. Tomorrow is going to be very interesting. Wang Yi is going to be at a Washington think tank. He's going to be making a speech at 9.30 in the morning, a matter of hours from now. And uh, hopefully he'll be uh, asking, answering some questions there. Mike, I think it's a very good chance to get some, some very unvarnished comments from Wang Yi, who is uh, an incredible diplomat and uh, has that diplomatic ability to fuse all kinds of situations. And, of course, we'll be covering it. We'll be there. All right, Sean, thanks so much.